So here's a challenge for you. You have a 90 minute movie with 12 characters that's all set in one tiny location. Where do we sit here? Now how do you shoot it? Well, if you're like so many other directors working today, then you'll just employ the same basic, boring coverage grabbing every actor and every setup at 12 different angles. And if you really want to spice things up, walk with me. Then you'll throw in an Aaron Sorkin walk and talk. The West Wing, few good men, the social network. Studio 60. Shut up. Now I like walk and talks just as much as the next person, and I don't think coverage is an evil word. But there's a level of discipline that many of cinema's classically trained directors understood and embraced. So let's take a look at Sidney Lumet's 12 Angry Men. And instead of grabbing a random mishmash of close-ups just to solve it all in post, let's talk about fluidity, density, and proper staging. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, you're making a big mistake, you people. This kid is a liar, I know it, I know all about them. The first principle is to free the actors up. Get them on their feet, move them about through the location, let them interact with their environment. Because so much of acting is all about body language, about how a particular character moves, how they carry themselves, how they react. And I think you'd be surprised at the amount of directors who limit dialogue to this. Now let's take it up to Ben, let him decide. Characters just standing, or sitting, and nothing else. And if that's all you're doing, then you're limiting the actors the opportunity to explore. They're actors. Let them act. I want you to get up and tell me why you changed your book. Come on, I'll give me reasons. And the other main principle is to free up the frame itself by taking full advantage of every space inside any given frame. Now what about this, Mr. Reasonable Doubt? That's not the knife, don't you remember? Oh, brilliant. The point of both of these is to create a kind of density within each and every scene, so that story points can flow naturally out of the combined movement of the actors and the camera, rather than just simply from the cutting. When the window is open and the train goes by the noise... So with those two principles in mind, here are six easy ways to create density within your shots. I will, not just a minute. Start simple. Instead of always keeping your characters framed in the foreground, let them occupy more than one section of the screen. Allow them to move all about through the frame. And sometimes that's as simple as just moving them from the background to the foreground. From there, consider how you can play around with the various spaces inside the frame and how you can keep them active figure out some way we could break it up. If you have multiple stories occurring at the same time, like here for instance, try staging them in different sections of the same frame. You know, there's some pretty strange people working there. You can have characters in different spaces interact with one another. From his bedroom to his front door in 15 seconds. He said 20 seconds. He said 15. He said 20 seconds. What are you trying to destroy? You can trade off focus between them. Not guilty. Guilty. Boy, how do you like that? Or you can start a shot with one character. I want to hear more. But have another take over. I'm talking here. You have no right to leave this room. Yeah, the intention isn't to create an overly busy or distracting image, but to create a fluidity in the storytelling. Can you progress the story by just simply moving the actors into the frame? What? What's the difference? He got on, did he? I mean, he got there, didn't he? No, well, wait a second. Well, he said he ran, at least I think he did. Now, look, I don't remember what he said, but I don't see how he could have run to the door. He said what? he went from his bedroom to the front door. Now, isn't that enough? Where was the bedroom? It was down the hall somewhere. I thought you remembered everything. Don't you remember that? No. You can always progress the story by moving the camera, and if you do, consider moving into different types of framing. For instance, starting with a wide, moving into a close-up, and then ending with an over-the-shoulder. Look, she's known the kid all his life. And because our eyes naturally follow what's being emphasized, we don't think about the fact that what we're watching is all done in one shot, because it feels like more than one. Someone sent for Patsy the policeman to get a pre-knuckle duck, and uh, we'll just sweat the whole thing out, right? <laughs> I don't think he ought to joke about it. The next one is pretty standard, but still valid. Try allowing conversation to play out in the same shot, rather than multiple. The boy admitted going out of the house at 8 o'clock on the night of the murder after being slapped several times by his father. No, 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 he didn't say slapped, he said punch. There's a difference between a slap and a punch. After being hit several times by his father. For one, it creates that playful dynamic where our eyes bounce back and forth between who's ever speaking, but more importantly, Reactions tend to play better if we can see them as they're happening, rather than taking the time to cut away. And here, you take it. You know, you take on the responsibility. I'll just, I'll just keep my mouth shut, that's all. What are you getting so hot about? Calm down, will you? No, don't tell me to calm down. Hey, you want to take the chair? Just take the chair. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, so see such a thing. Running. Listen, you think it's funny hey, or something? Hey, forget it, fella. The whole thing's on it. Lastly, consider holding off on tight close-ups for only those moments of prime emphasis. What made you change your vote? He didn't change his vote. I did. If you hold off and then suddenly intercut one, 
I think there's a kind of subconscious click that happens that clues the audience in that something important is happening simply through the composition. And you weren't under an emotional stress, were you? I'll give you a demonstration. Somebody get up. And when you put all of these together, when you make full use of every part and every section of the frame, when you allow the actors the freedom to move about, and when you integrate the various moving parts of the story all into a single setup, What's hey, you, know, that, boy. Boy. you can get something totally engrossing. Oh, nobody's hurt. Right? Right, nobody hurt. Because the best thing about this kind of direction is that it remains engaging and seamless without ever calling attention to itself. You don't have to settle for constant close-ups or steady cams, and you don't need to go handheld to create constant movement. All you need is what's right in front of you. The frame. And everything inside of it. How about you? I don't know about the rest of them, but I'm getting a little tired of this yakety yakking back and forth. It's getting us nowhere. So I guess I'll have to break it up. I changed my vote to not guilty. You what? Wait, wait, don't go yet. So, I've had an insane amount of fun with this channel for the last 18 months, but I've only ever been able to treat it like a part-time job, and during all of those 18 months, it has been a crazy, crazy dream of mine to be able to someday do this thing full-time. And so, I have decided to do the thing that every other YouTube channel has already done, and start a Patreon. If you guys don't know, Patreon is a voluntary subscription service where you can help support your favorite creators to do what they do best. You guys already have my, my absolute humblest thanks for taking the time to watch my videos, and if you do decide to donate, even at the smallest membership tier, you have absolutely no idea how much that would mean to me. It would be, that would be the most crazy, amazing thing ever. Every single dollar donated will go directly into making these videos as best as they can be. It means more in-depth videos, it means longer videos, it means more videos, all of that. Uh, if that sounds at all like something you'd be interested in doing, you can visit my page at patreon.com slash royalocean, or you can click the link in the description where I've got the whole campaign listed out and the various different levels of membership. Uh, a couple of patron posts are already public, and maybe, just maybe, some rewards.